Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mark, author, speaker, inventor, and endoscopic spinal surgery specialist. Today, I'd like to just give a brief presentation about a database that's probably the most important database uh, in orthopedic spine surgery. And I'd like to give some papers that have been given uh, in the future, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about this particular database. The database is called SPORT, S-P-O-R-T, and it stands for Spine Patient Outcome Research Trial. Spine Patient Outcomes Research Trial. And it was uh, really thought about for a number of years. It was funded by the National Institute of Health uh, in 1999 at the cost of $30 million. It was the largest uh, funding for any orthopedic surgery project. And this was to help determine the orthopedic outcomes of spine surgery. The main purpose uh, of the sport data is to compare surgical treatment of back problems with non-operative or conservative treatment of back problems. Sport data uses both randomized and observational type of studies. And just to give you a brief example, a randomized study would be a group of people with the same problem and they had to go into the surgical group or the non-surgical group they would not know and not have any choice in the matter. It was just a single group of people, same problem, and then they would end up in a group A surgical or a group B non-surgical on a randomized basis. The other type are observational uh, type of studies, and these are uh, studies in which the physician that the patient was treated could actually influence the direction of treatment. So they may have gone initially to uh, uh, surgical, but they were persuaded maybe to go to conservative and stayed that way, or maybe started, in, uh, maybe started with conservative treatment and then encouraged to go to uh, surgical. So that's what an observational uh, type of uh, study is all about. You might ask, why this was spawned. And the main reason is because of the tremendous increase of surgical procedures being performed in the spine during the nine-year time of 1979 to 1987. In that period of time, you saw a 25% increase of laminectomies, a 75% increase in discectomies, and a 200% increase in fusions for treatment of spine conditions. You might ask what the most common conditions of the spine that require surgery are. And they are disc herniations, spinal stenosis, and degenerative spondylolisthesis, which results in spinal stenosis. The cost of spinal problems to society was estimated at that time to be between 30 and 70 billion dollars per year. The first landmark study that compared non-operative to surgical treatment of a back problem was published in 1983 and focused on the treatment of disc herniations or intervertebral disc herniations. In this paper, it was noted that up to one year, people actually benefited from having an operation on their back, having their discs operated on. However, if they waited four years or 10 years after a disc herniation and evaluated the, all the different components of function, comfort, quality of life, etc. There was no statistical difference. So very, I mean, really very interesting and almost no way to discover this without a randomized controlled study in which a large group of people, the same problem, were treated different ways, uh, but not with any, with no rhyme or reason. They were just assigned to one group or the other. And the upshot was that surgery, if performed on the disc, would give an improved situation up to one year, 
but if they had no treatment, uh, if there was no statistical difference at four years and 10 years after the disc herniation, which is really kind of amazing. But one might wonder how they collect this data, and there's a lot of data being collected for sport. Well, actually, it's collected through a network of spine surgeons, and it's called the National Spine Network, uh, multiple centers, 13 practices in 11 states. So you've got a pretty big diversity of people treating these problems. And within those practices, of course, there's both the uh, randomly controlled studies as well as the observational studies. The purpose of the National Spine Network then is to compare non-operative and operative treatment and to compare surgical versus non-surgical treatment and its effect on symptoms, quality of life, physical function, and really patient satisfaction. To date, the sport data has been used in 40 original papers and has been cited in 780 references on other papers. So this is really good, solid data. And we'll be taking a look at some of the papers that have come forth from this data in the upcoming future. Well, listen, thanks a lot for listening. I really wanted to just explain to you what sport is as it applies to spines, spine surgery. And again, let's just recap. It's essentially a way to, it's a data collected to compare surgical and non-surgical treatment of certain conditions of the back. So we can see, yes, there's really a scientific reason to do surgery on a certain problem or not. And it depends on the collection of a large amount of data, preferably from randomly controlled studies and with a large group of people participating. I wanted to just set you up for some of the next papers or I'll kind of discuss with you uh, our published papers that have come from the sport data. But first I just wanted to introduce to you the concept of sport and what it actually means in terms of a database. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Please contact me with any questions you have at the office or on the website.